Before we get into the video, I've got some more good news for you guys. We're finally available on Spotify and iTunes, and tune in as All Things D&D Story Dungeon. Have fun listening to our content by simply subscribing to our podcast. All new stories will release on podcast channels a day after the YouTube video release. Please subscribe to us and support us like you always have. How My Paranoid Party Burned Down a Man's House to Fix the Creepy Doll Problem The story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is a story from my time DMing at a local comic store in my hometown. I had a small table of three players at the time, which I was very grateful for. I'm okay with bigger groups, my limit being eight players in a DM, but with a smaller group, I would have more time to try and develop their individual stories, using elements from their backgrounds to seed future adventure hooks. This helps with the verisimilitude I strive to create as a storyteller. I told them all that they would be starting at a town called Pumpkin Hills, which is located at the southeastern edge of a country called Hukroinia. The party consisted of Grethen, a blue dragonborn storm sorcerer who had come to Pumpkin Hills after receiving a letter from his arcane master, only to find that the old wizard had died under mysterious circumstances and that a strange man was now living in his house. More on that later. He was played by my youngest and yet most veteran player, M. Next there was Dren, a half-orc barbarian who had left his mercenary tribe to seek out fortune, glory, and a wife to bear his child to replenish his clan's ever-dwindling numbers. He was guided by ancestral spirits who aided him in battle. He was not a particularly bright guy, but he would have your back in a fight. He was played by my newest player, D, who was kind of quiet, but very friendly and cooperative. Lastly, there was an elf rogue, whose name sadly escapes me. He was a member of an adventurer's guild and had come to Pumpkin Hills to meet with the local representative, the strange man living in Greethen's late master's house. He was primarily interested in loot, but would never turn on the party and save their butts through clever thinking and precise stabbing more than once. He was played by Jay, another new player. The party was united in a local tavern one dark night when the spirits of those buried in a nearby ancient mound were disturbed by a pair of necromancers and their white master, laring in their tomb and using their bones to create undead minions. The party was hired by the town council to find out what was causing this haunting as they were unwilling to send the town guard to investigate the burial mound because it was hidden in the Witchwood, a supposedly haunted forest that everyone in town feared and avoided. In addition to the town council hiring them, they were also approached by the aforementioned man who now lived in Greethen's dead master's house, a half-elf named Dudley Nightshade who worked for their adventurer's guild. Dudley looked a lot like a Tim Burton character, spindly thin, pale to the point of looking sickly and dressing only in black and gray. He always spoke softly and had a fondness for dark humor. His sinister name, mannerisms, and appearance made Greethen suspicious of him. Dudley claimed to be a friend of the Dragonborn's late master, but Greethen never heard his master ever mention Dudley at all. Greethen suspected Dudley of using some kind of psychic magic to kill Greethen's master, as no wounds were discovered on the corpse, but its expression was one of sheer terror. His suspicion intensified when Dudley agreed to only let Greethen read his master's research documents regarding some ancient prophecy he had been researching, if Greethen would join the Adventurer's Guild. All in all, Dudley was aloof, strange, and pushy. Greethen wanted to investigate Dudley, but that would have to wait, as the party was itching to plunge itself into the shadows of the Witchwood. Once inside the Enchanted Forest, they battled against zombies, found an enchanted pool that polymorphed whoever drank from it into beasts, and negotiated safe passage from the two dryads who lived there. Before long, the party arrived at the burial mound and proceeded to tear through it, destroying the undead, killing the necromancers and the white, and getting a bunch of cool loot, including a magical warhammer for Dren the Barbarian. They returned to Pumpkin Hills and were celebrated as town heroes, showered with praise from the locals. Greethen enjoyed the gold and the glory, but he was still suspicious of Dudley's intentions and whether or not he had a hand in Greethen's master's death. He shared his suspicions with the party, and together they made a plan. Dren was not a member of the Adventurer's Guild, but he would express interest in possibly joining Dudley, asking him to join him for dinner so that they might discuss what membership would entail. Meanwhile, Greethen and the Rogue would break into Dudley's house and examine everything he had to see if they could find any clues to his intentions. Greethen wanted to find answers, but the Rogue really just wanted to rob Dudley. The plan initially went off without a hitch, as you might expect. 
Dren and Dudley enjoyed a nice dinner, whilst Greethan and the rogue snuck under the cover of darkness and broke into Dudley's house. The rogue picked the lock on the door, and they snuck inside and quickly made their way to Dudley's bedroom. There they found a strange locked chest, trapped with a dose of sleeping gas, that thankfully did not knock them both out when it went off. After the rogue woke Greethan up, they opened the chest and found a bag of money, along with various useless odds and ends, items of sentimental value to Dudley. One of Dudley's knickknacks was a doll. It was a small porcelain doll about a foot tall that resembled a little girl with pale skin, bright blue eyes, and long dark hair. It was wearing a magenta-colored dress and painted pink lips with a rather vacant smile. Neither Greethan nor the rogue gave it much thought, and they just tossed it aside onto the ground. By this point, they were getting nervous that Dudley might come back at any minute, and I am loving it. They are really role-playing very well here. Eventually, the stress becomes too much, and they decide to make it look like Dudley was robbed. Uh, by someone else, I mean. The rogue opens the bag of holding and announces he's taking everything from Dudley's chest. Everything? I asked. Yeah, everything. The gold, the books. The rogue answered. Don't forget the doll, Greethan said. The doll too, yeah. What doll? I asked. The doll I put on the floor, Greethan said a bit exasperated by the exchange. There's no doll there. What doll? I said with a bit of frustration. The rogue's face lights up with an oh crap expression. I turn around and look for the doll. As you turn you briefly see a flash of movement. A small figure was perched at the edge of the staircase. When it darts out of sight, it's almost as if an invisible hand had simply grabbed it and yanked it away. When you run to the top of the staircase and look down, there's no sign of anything unusual down there. Greethan and the rogue are naturally freaked out by this, thinking they have just accidentally released some sort of horrible monstrosity upon the world. When I switch over briefly to Dudley and Dren leaving the tavern and returning to Dudley's home to sign the paperwork that will make Dren a full member of the guild, the two begin panicking in real life. I duck behind the DM screen to hide my smirk. Desperate to stop the creepy doll, as well as to cover up their crime, the two come to the only obvious solution. They decided to set Dudley's house on fire. The two of them busted out flasks of oil and quickly used magic and tender boxes to set the place ablaze, hoping it would kill the creepy doll. It didn't. The two ran into a nearby copse of trees and hid, emerging only once the townsfolk noticed the fire and began to form a bucket brigade in an attempt to put out the inferno. Although they kept the fire from spreading, they could not extinguish it in time. Dudley returned home, just to see the last dying embers smoldering on the blackened husk that once was his house. The poor guy was devastated, almost catatonic, and the party seemed to finally realize that Dudley probably was not evil, and they had just ruined his life. The party actually did work to help Dudley recover. They convinced a local farmer to put the guy up until he could build another house, and they donated money to help him out. Because of this, I refrained from changing their alignments to evil, as they had tried to make it up to Dudley, albeit without confessing to what they had done. Dudley never found out what they had done and remained friendly with the party. He asked them once or twice if they had seen a doll matching the description of the creepy doll anywhere around town, hinting that he believed that it was responsible for the arson. He otherwise would not speak of the doll and seemed hopeful that it had been destroyed in the inferno. As for the creepy doll itself, it showed up occasionally to make trouble for the party. Usually it was juvenile but unpleasant pranks, like putting nails in their boats or planting a sharp knife next to their heads while they slept. Another time it alerted a ghostly assassin to their presence, which nearly resulted in the death of a character. Sometimes they would see it around town, watching them from behind the windows, but it always vanished before they could do anything about it. The most trouble it caused them was actually getting them banished from the town itself during the werewolf incident, but that is another story. The funniest thing, I think, is that I did not really have a plan for the creepy doll's origins or anything. It was not possessed by a ghost, it was not a lich's animated phylactery, and it was not some sort of evil gnomish contraption. I just thought it would be a cool thing for Dudley to have, given his appearance and tastes, and my spur-of-the-moment decision to make it alive and malevolent resulted in excellent role-playing, suspense, skullduggery, arson, and ultimately redemption. If there's a moral to be had here, it is this. Players like to do random things, unexpected things, things you didn't plan for. It is only fair to return the favor. So the next time your players are rooting through a pile of tchotchkes kept in a dark and secret place, maybe introduce them to Creepy Doll. I am always eager to meet new playmates. I don't care who you are, but dolls are creepy. And bringing it back to mess with the players is a stroke of genius. Please let us know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. 
Our next video will be posted in two days, so stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.